<laughs> she got it. Hello there and welcome to Reykjavik Greipan's newscast. My name is Valur Grettisson, of course. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Greipan. This is Polly. Uh, we haven't seen her for a while. She's our chief of morale officer. She makes sure that everybody's happy and that everybody, <laughs> that she is happy more or less. And we decided to, to take our frisbee today, not our ball. Oh, that was a nice throw, right? Uh, we're not going to go to the volcano today, but there are a lot of news about the volcano. I'm going to tell you about them. And of course, also uh, what's happening in COVID. And uh, yeah. We're here at this Frolf, uh, like Frisbee Golf uh, area in Breiðholt. Uh, this is said to be like the, the ghetto of Iceland. It's not to be correct. It's a wonderful neighborhood. And I'm not sure if many ghettos have open spaces like this. <laughs> or, uh, and of course, uh, like in Iceland, is, we don't have anything remotely close to what you would call a ghetto, perhaps in bigger cities. So uh, it's a wonderful neighborhood. Uh, and I love this game, mostly because it's impossible to play it with Polly. She always kind of messes it up. Uh, but it's funny. So, uh, I'm gonna, because I haven't been that much uh, talking about the Icelandic news because of the volcan volcanic uh, activity, I want to go a little bit into what's happening since we spoke uh, before volcano. <laughs> uh, I told you about this uh, odd hotel, this quarantine hotel. And I told you about the lawsuit. There were over 200 people and uh, over five different cases, uh, like people, 12 people in all, they filed a suit against the government, said this is not legal. Uh, and so not too much of a surprise for any Icelanders. Uh, they were right. Uh, the court said this is not legal. Uh, the, 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 the ground, the, the, like the law that uh, it was grounded on, was very weak and so weak that this was legal. But there's a difference here. It means that uh, if you're a tourist, for example, and you're coming to Iceland, you have to quarantine, uh, if not at the quarantine hotel, then in your own hotel. Uh, meaning that if you have like a residence in Iceland and you can actually and truly uh, uh, quarantine at your own home, you should be allowed to. Oh, she did not get that. Well, uh, so, uh, meaning that uh, we have like a two kind of system. Uh, so basically, if you're an Icelander or live in Iceland uh, and you have a home, you can quarantine there. Uh, if you don't, you have to go to the quarantine hotel. Uh, and either way, you have to quarantine, no matter what. <laughs> so, please do that. Uh, the volcano in Faradarsjall, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, the Keldinga Dals Gos, just to re re like remind you a little bit uh, on our terms here. Uh, the volcano is called Keldinga Dals Gos because it came up, the one came up in Keldinga Dalur, the valley of Unix, uh, or Castration or whatever. <laughs> uh, but the, the volcanic system is called uh, Fagradals Fjall, uh, Mount, Mount Fagradals Fjall. Uh, so, uh, the thing is, this is the smallest volcano that we have had uh, for at least a century. And the thing is, we have had, uh, we have had six volcanoes only since 2000. Uh, I was going to like, go over the volcanoes in the 20th century, but there were so many that it was like... Uh, and some of them like, went down and rotted again and so on. So it, I, I had a hard time to find the, the right criteria to basically tell you how many uh, volcanoes there were. But they were, if not dozens, at least hundreds. That's okay. Well, uh, so, it's the smallest one, but uh, nonetheless, it's the most popular volcano we ever... God, that was horrible. Polly. Stop it! <laughs> it was the smallest one, but it's the most popular one. Uh, a fraction of the nation have, of course, visited it, uh, as well as, uh, as well as our uh, our guests, our tourists. 
But the thing is that uh, uh, there, there have been tourists going to the mountain that haven't been quarantined. And it's very important that you understand this if you're coming to Iceland, uh, that you have to quarantine because if you don't, uh, all of these waves have started exactly like this. People thinking that uh, they went through the first test and they were like, got negative from it. They were like, ah, we're fine. Let's go and do something. And in the end, uh, they became positive, or were diagnosed positive, and they uh, trans uh, transmitted it, uh, the virus to someone else, uh, and people have died. So if you don't want to kill Icelanders, then quarantine in these five days. It's quite simple. Uh, it should not be too much of a hassle for anyone. And uh, something that everyone should be expecting when coming to Iceland. Uh, the gas pollution is a concern from the mountains, uh, from the volcanoes, but uh, uh, it has been going to the west, to the town of Vogar, uh, and there to, towards the glacier Snæfellsjökull in the, in the west of Iceland. And it's, uh, I mean, it, it has not been disrupting too much. People are getting up warnings, but the wind, uh, thankfully, is like it is in Iceland. It's a lot of it. Meaning that, uh, meaning that the wind dispersed the, the gas, so it's not that dangerous. Uh, also, the police, they are trying to ensure that no tourists are visiting the volcano that have not been prepared to hike up there. Meaning that if you don't know how to hike, see, and there are a lot of you that don't know how to hike, uh, you need, if you meet the police or the search and rescue team and you just dress like this, like I am now, uh, they will probably just tell you to go back or they will arrest you. Uh, because there is more of a... Whoops. Okay, go there. Polly. Polly. I think we lost our disc. No, there it is. Go there. So, there are rules, uh, it is not like uh, they're going to arrest you and, and fine you, but they will tell, tell you to go back and they will be quite hard about it because, uh, like I always say, the, the, the people that get hurt uh, seeing the volcano, they get hurt by hiking there. Nobody has been killed by a volcano in Iceland <laughs> uh, or, uh, or anything like that, but a lot of people have been killed hiking to these volcanoes or uh, just hiking in general in Iceland. So that alone is quite dangerous. Uh, and it's because people do not always understand how dangerous and uh, like how the wind can change and the rain can come and the snowstorm and so on. And me and Art actually, we're gonna do a guide for you if you want to go there. We will publish this later on, but it's quite important that you understand how grave this is. Uh, so. Uh, when we go to, yeah, by the way, Schengen. Uh, Schengen is open in Iceland, meaning that uh, if you, for example, are from the US and you had had, like, been vaccinated or have a PCR test that can show that you are uh, not with the virus or had the virus, uh, then you can actually come to Iceland, wherever you're from in the world, and see the volcano. So, uh, what you need, of course, is to go to covid.is, our information, uh, information, uh, wow, that was horrible. Our information uh, insight in Iceland for about COVID is in 11 languages. So if you, if you prefer it in Arabic or, or Swedish or, or even English, then you can go there and find it in all of these. Yes! <laughs> then you can find it all there. Are we done? No. Yeah. So, uh, but it means that uh, uh, on May 1st, uh, a lot of these rules are going to change. Uh, but you have to, of course, check on with uh, COVID.is, uh, check on here, of course, and then you can see, like, uh, what it's all about. Uh, we have been vaccinating Icelanders, like, uh, uh, a lot, and we have now around 30,000 people vaccinated. To be honest, uh, when it comes to pol politics, uh, people are saying this is happening way too slow, and I kind of agree. But uh, we're not getting much from the uh, from the the EU, like when it comes to vaccine, which is basically uh, how it is. All countries are dealing with this, 
But Icelanders are getting very frustrated because of it, because, I mean, it takes us like... We, we could actually vaccinate the whole nation in two days and be over with it. But we have to wait like everybody else, and uh, this is complicated. Uh, only one got po tested positive yesterday. Uh, that, that, that is domestic, domestically, but five or four or five were at the, at the borders. So you can see, like, the virus is always coming into the country. A lot of Icelanders are very uh, pissed because of this. Polly! What the? Hey. Uh, meaning that uh, meaning that Icelanders are quite harsh when it comes to the borders. They, they do not want them to be open in any form at all. Uh, they want to do, do it very much like the New Zealand. Uh, and it's a, it's a harsh restriction uh, and basically get everything domestically ongoing and ignore the outer world. I mean, it's one way to do it, but it's not... Uh, not good for the economy, that's, that's for sure. So it's, it's a huge struggle, actually. Uh, also, talking about the, the economy, uh, the unemployment is like 11% in Iceland, which is the highest in the Nordic countries. And Icelanders are very, very uh, used to work. We start working very young. Uh, my first job was like when I was 10 or 11. I was working in a factory with my father, actually. So Icelanders uh, are... Uh, we are, yeah, we are hardworking people, uh, meaning that uh, these unemployment numbers are a concern and, and very much so for the, the government, because there are elections uh, this fall, and if this does not give improves, improve, they could be in trouble. But uh, that said, uh, the government in Iceland, which are three parties, uh, they are the Left Greens, the, the, uh, the, the Independence Party and the Progressive Party. And they are actually quite popular uh, in, the, in the polls right now, which is uh, surprising, but could be like a COVID effect. We at, at least we have never seen anything like this. Uh, and there is, hasn't been such a political stability in Iceland for the longest time. Uh, and we are kind of grateful, I guess, for that at the same time as we're dealing with, uh, with this. Uh, uh, virus. So, uh, uh, yeah, and also uh, there are new new restrictions uh, on 15th of April. Uh, the epidemiologist he was in an in interview today, and he said he uh, most likely he would uh, he would talk to, for uh, like uh, looser restrictions, because this fourth wave we, we were kind of scared that this would be a bad one, but because of the British strain that came into the country. Uh, they think that we have more or less beaten this. It didn't go as high as we feared, uh, meaning that we are actually in a quite a good situation right now. So that's it for the news. COVID is uh, under control. Volcanoes are multiplying, did I tell you that? Uh, we have the fourth wet. Uh, it came up, what, uh, like half a day after me and Art uh, visited the place, uh, meaning that it's... It's fair to say that me and Art are more or less manufacturing more volcanoes every time we go there. <laughs> so it is what it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, remember, of course, our sponsors, Instock Beer and InstockBeer.com if, uh, if you want to see what they have there. Uh, remember our online shop. You can buy a lot of good stuff. Uh, among others, you can buy actually Art. Art <laughs> He's taking uh, incredible footage, as, as you have seen, of course. And you can find this footage also in, the, in our online shop. And uh, also remember grapevine.is. It's uh, grapevine.is. If you can't understand my harsh Icelandic uh, uh, pronunciation. Pronunciation. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And thank you for all the support. I really like this communi community. Okay. Kodi. Hey, tak, tak, tak. Tack. Ja, ja. Kast i hjärt. Och...